What's up guys, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and today I'm not actually recording on OBS. I'm recording using XSplit and in my next video I'll be doing the exact opposite. Why is that? Well today I'm going to show you how to set up NDI as an output and an input with OBS. So say you have a two PC setup and you're not using a capture card like an Elgato or something similar, you can stream from one PC to another to offload all of the real compression work to a second PC. Say you're gaming on one, you'll probably want to use X264 compression because it looks better at smaller file sizes. However, that is very demanding and when you're running games, recording at the same time and a couple of different other programs, then it's in fact very difficult for your computer to maintain good frame rates in any program really. So that's why we stream from one computer to another using something like NDI, where we compress very lightly and end up with a large file size on the PC that we're gaming on, and we compress it on the second PC to go out to a stream or to just record it there. But with the basic explanation aside, I'll have another video coming out in a couple of days that'll be linked down in the comments and in the description down below saying why you might want to use NDI, the benefits, etc, etc, and going through a whole bunch of stuff like that. However, today's video is purely just on setting up NDI as an output Output from OBS and adding it as an input to OBS. If you're interested in setting it up as an output or input to XSplit, then my video tomorrow should be covering that. So, of course, inside of OBS, if we head across to Tools, you won't see anything about NDI here. If we go into our settings, there's nothing about NDI under Output. We only have the option to stream or record. And under stream, we can only choose a service or put in our own RTMP server, etc, etc. So what do we need? Well, we need the actual OBS NDI plugin. So heading into the description down below, there's a link to this forum page over here, OBS NDI, New Tech NDI Integration into OBS Studio. The last update was released on November 12th, 2019, meaning that this is still getting performance updates. Heading into the latest updates, you can see that it's updated roughly every month or so. So how exactly do we go about using this? Well, it's pretty simple. All we need to do is hit download in the top right and it'll be taken to this GitHub page over here. There's a bunch of information here about installing it, but on Windows, we'll simply just use the installer, which is the recommended one. Note you must restart your PC once it's done. So all we need to do is hit the OBS NDI Windows Installer.exe button down here. And it'll download the installer. Then we simply just open it up hit run, hit yes when prompted for admin, and then we'll see this over here. Make sure OBS is completely closed before continuing. Then we'll hit next, make sure it's got the correct OBS install folder, next, and if it says that it already exists, great. That means that we picked the right OBS Studio folder. We'll hit yes, and then make sure both of these are checked. NDI plugin for OBS Studio, as well as the NDI runtime, of course, unless you've already installed this. But I'm gonna leave it ticked because I don't have it installed. Next. Next, install. Then I'll hit I accept. Next, can pick anywhere for this. Next, next, install. Now we've installed the NDI runtime as well. Then we'll hit finish and then finish again. And we're done installing the OBS NDI plugin. Now, of course, if you're gonna be streaming from one computer to another, you'll need to go ahead and repeat these install steps on your second PC as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on my laptop, but I won't be showing you that. Looking back at the GitHub page, you can see over here that it says on Windows, you must reboot your computer to make a new or updated NDI runtime installation effective. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. And there we have it, I've now restarted my PC and opened up OBS. As you can see, basically nothing has changed. However, looking at the tools dropdown, you can now see that there's an NDI output settings option over here. So I'll click on that. Then you have the option to set up a main output and a preview output. A preview output, as far as I know, is a much lower quality. However, I'll be checking main output over here and you can name it, say, OBS main. I'll hit OK and you can see absolutely nothing has changed. Going into settings, heading into output, you can see that we can no longer change the settings over here. We can change the bitrate, etc., etc., but we can't change the modes for recording or streaming over here. That's because we are currently live with NDI. So if I go to tools, NDI output, uncheck main output, head back to settings, output, you can see that these options are now available, meaning that we're not streaming. Anyways, I'll go back to tools, output, and enable main output. Now we are currently streaming this over here, as well as all of my audio outputs over here. By checking advanced audio properties, I think we're streaming this first track over here, though I'm not entirely sure. All of these should be checked, meaning that you're streaming your desktop audio, your other inputs, and your mic to just one audio output. Anyways, hitting close, you can see that we're not doing anything here. But I'll go ahead and open up Task Manager, 
and head across to the performance tab, followed by ethernet, just so you can see the kind of network draw that NDI has. You can see it's currently sitting around seven megabytes. And that's because I'm watching a Twitch stream. Now I'm simply gonna head across to my laptop and show you guys the same process over there. But we're gonna add this NDI as an input. So looking over here on my laptop, it's not exactly the biggest screen, but heading across to tools, you can see NDI is there. However, we're gonna leave both of these unchecked. Down here by sources, I'll simply right click, add, followed by NDI source. I'll just leave it named whatever, hit okay. And now we can go into source name, and it should automatically detect NDI streams on my network. However, it's currently not detecting any, and that's because I have a firewall on my main PC that's blocking them. So all I need to do is head back to my main PC and temporarily disable my firewall. Of course, you can add an exception later on. Heading back to my laptop, hitting the source dropdown after reopening this window over here, you can see that there's a bunch of options. OBS main, mic, door one, door two. These three up here, I'll get to in a second, and these are audio only streams. However, we're gonna click on OBS main, and you should only really have one if this is the first time you're doing it. Bandwidth, I'll make sure it's on the highest to make sure that my gaming PC has the lowest possible processing power being used. Sync, I'll leave it as network, allow hardware acceleration, fix alpha blending, you don't really need this. And then these are your color range settings. I'm streaming at full currently, so I'll make sure that's full and I'm using BT709. Of course, if you don't know what these are, you can check your OBS settings over here. So settings, then advanced, and you can see color space 709, color range full. So once I've done everything, I can hit OK, and you should see my main PC screen on this window over here. Of course, because my OBS stage is 2K, this one is also 2K, but I've now resized it to be 1080p. As you can see, if I move something around on my one screen, it happens almost immediately on my second one. Notice how over here, I'm using about 180 megabits per second send constant. So as you know, with a low performance impact comes this, a very big file size. Now, of course, you're not actually recording anything, so you don't need to worry about hard disk space. But if you can, I'd make sure that you have your two PCs connected using a very high powered switch or even directly if possible. But you can see it's using about 180 megabits per second. And if I were to go into my laptop, NDI source, I'll change it from bandwidth highest to lowest, which should lower the resolution dramatically. You can see that it drops down from 180 to about 20 megabits, but you can also see that the size of the input itself has dropped dramatically as well. Making it bigger, you can see the quality is absolutely garbage, and that's the preview mode. If you have many NDI outputs and you're in some sort of a studio, you'd have a bunch of these previews as things that you can click between to select a main streaming source. That's why we need to have it set to highest. As soon as I change that, you can see it drops off and it goes back up to 170, 180 megabits per second. So now if I talk into my main PC, you can see that NDI source is going up and my laptop is as well, but of course, only one of these is reacting to my real mic. The other one's the microphone built into my laptop. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute that one. And of course you can see it moving when I'm not talking. And that's because I have music playing currently and a stream that I'm watching, meaning that our desktop sound is also coming through. So if you have it set up like this, you can basically go ahead and hit start recording or start streaming and it will work basically perfectly. However, all of your audio is being mixed on your desktop PC that you're streaming from instead of the secondary PC where it's coming in as just one source and being broadcasted to the internet. Of course, if you're used to changing settings on your streaming PC, then this is basically fine. However, if you want even finer control and you want to record using your second PC instead of your main one into separate audio streams, you can go down here to audio mixer and for each of your outputs, you can hit the cog wheel then go to filters and you can see I already have one added here, but we'll hit the plus dedicated NDI output audio only and give it a name and it'll pop up like this over here. You can name it again and you can just hit apply changes. As long as you have it with the eye visible like this, that means that it's currently active. So if I head back to my laptop, I click on my sources, add NDI source. I'll just name this door one source name door one. I can then go bandwidth audio only and then hit okay. However, you can also change the latency mode to low or normal. So I'll put it on low for now. And you can see my desktop audio is coming through here, but my microphone's coming down here with the total mix. Then of course you can add your other inputs. So I'll go ahead and add another NDI source, which is my NDI mic. Audio source is my mic. Put it to audio only, low experimental. Okay. And then you see that absolutely nothing is happening down here where it says NDI mic. That's because on my main PC, if I go to my microphone, Go into filters, you can see that this currently got the eye blocked. 
check that, you can see that it immediately starts working on my second PC. Awesome, so now we have our sound coming through here. We can go into advanced audio properties and set them up to separate channels for separate audio track recordings, etc., etc., and basically set it up as you would normally. Pretty cool. Of course, you can do this as many times as you want, but the audio may be slightly out of sync. How exactly would you fix that? Well, you'll need to do some sort of clap sync test or some sort of beep and shows a flash on the screen. There's a couple of those online. Basically, you'd right click on your input that's currently delayed, filters, hit the plus below audio slash video filters, and then we'll add a video delay async. And you can delay the amount of milliseconds between receiving a signal and showing it on your screen, or if it's audio only, playing the audio. And another thing I forgot to mention just before we end this video is you can do something really cool with OBS to OBS. Of course, I showed you how to add the audio outputs as their own separate NDIs using the filters, but you can also do this for each and every capture over here. So if I wanted to do it for a display capture, I could go filters, add a new filter, OBS NDI, dedicated NDI output. Okay, I can give it a name here, so I'll name it desktop, apply changes, close. I can head across to my second PC, Add a new input, NDI source, name it anything, choose the source name as my desktop, there we go. And you can see that it adds it as a second input. But of course, I'm adding the same picture, so I'll go ahead and use a better demonstration. Can I remove that and remove the filter from my desktop capture? Note that disabling will still show it in the network list. You'll have to remove this entirely. There we go. Close. So, of course, a good way to demonstrate that is by adding a new window capture name it whatever, I'll go ahead and capture, say, my Google Play Music on my second screen, okay, and you can see it's popping up over here. If I move it across in my source, you can see that it's moving across on my second PC because I'm streaming the entire scene. However, something cool that we can do is go into the filters, add in the NDI output, and I'll just name it Google Play, apply close. If I head across to my second PC, you can see that I still have the desktop source enabled, so I'll go ahead and turn that off. But I'll go add NDI source, name it whatever, and I'll choose the one that we just created, Google Play over there. OK. And once it connects, you can see it pops up over here. So network usage is a lot lower instead of being an exact 200 megabits. It's only using about 100. It's still a hell of a lot, but it's for a window that's about a third of the size of my full display. But as you can see, it's just this one window. If I were to put it on my main screen, move stuff around in front of it, it won't be covered up on my second PC. That's because it's a window capture, and that's basically how it works. But the cool thing is, if I enable display capture, enable source, you can see that I can still move it around my second PC. I'll put it on a second monitor of mine to get rid of it completely. Then something pretty cool that we can do is move it off of our scene entirely so it's hidden somewhere off the side like this. It won't be shown on our actual stream, but of course on our second PC you can see it's still popping up there and it's able to be moved around. If we hit the I to turn it off, and I were to go ahead and change the song entirely so you can see it change, maybe even change to a different window, you can see that it didn't update on my second PC. We do need to have this little I checked so that it's quote unquote visible. But you can see it's basically working now with no issue. So that's really cool. We can add a new window capture without actually capturing it on our main PC. If I were to go and start a recording here, it would record only this window over here and would be streaming those other applications to my second PC to go onto the internet or whatever. And that's it. That's the basics of setting up and getting NDI working for OBS to OBS from one computer to another. And as long as you're comfortable with spending about 200 megabits per second bandwidth between the two computers locally in a network so it won't cost you anything, then this is a great way of doing it. If you'd like to see performance impacts, etc, etc, then I'll have another video coming out on that sometime soon, and that'll be linked down in the description below. However, tomorrow's video is setting up NDI for XSplit to XSplit. Anyways, my name's been Technobe here for Troubleshoot. Hope this video was somewhat informative, and I'll see you all in the next one. Ciao!